Now, Chappelle Corby's return to Australia has been nothing short of a media circus. It seems the convicted drug smuggler has earned a level of fame often reserved for rock stars. The New York Times even describing her as one of Australia's most well-known, if not favourite, criminals. Yeah, remember how I said we weren't going to talk about it? <laughs> Soz about that. Uh, let's get today's take on this with Nine's Ross Greenwood, commentator Shelley Horton. Shelley, there is a, uh, an absolute frenzy out there. Uh, people are saying they're not obsessed with it, but they are. I don't care. I think the media's got this wrong. I think it's actually, it's journalists doing stories for journalists. The members of the public don't care. Look at your Facebook page. Everyone is hating it. They're saying that they're switching off. So I think that this is one of a case of journalists entertaining journalists. It's not a story to anyone else. We need to let it go. Who cares? I agree entirely, but look at the news ratings. Mm, I was going to say, right? and the, the news ratings tell the, the, news. the news ratings say that you're wrong. The news ratings are going through the roof. People are watching this. People are looking at the live coverage. People are fascinated by the circus. People are fascinated by why they're are interested. Are we hate watching it? Oh, you know when you hate yes. it? Are we hate yes, watching it? Yes, it's hate watching. Like, ah, oh, I hate this. I hate oh, this. What and what's with the now? stupid masks and this? It's and all and the fact free, is, you know, the Corby family's, family is manipulating the media. That's pretty obvious. The media is going along with it because they're worried about if they don't do it, then somebody else will do it. This is the old rivalry between uh, I'm doing it because you're doing it. And therefore, yeah. as a result, if you're doing it, then I've got to do it. And so the whole thing just becomes bigger and bigger. But also, why do we care what BBC says about Australian media? Because they're the moral compass of the rest of the world. I they mean, think yeah, of us convicts anyway. That's you a know, very, so no, it's no, just no. another no, case say, of us. That's a very good observation. Phone tapping and all that type of thing, notwithstanding in the UK, you'd have to say you wouldn't actually be taking your lead from British media mm. in terms of what they think about the way in which Australians cover whatever. You know, in terms of Chappelle Corby, I think most people would accept that she is a convict to drug, drug smuggler. People have been fascinated by Chappelle Corby because she has always pleaded her innocence. People are fascinated with Ch Chappelle Corby because she was an attractive young woman when mm. she was sent to prison and therefore the family created this hype and the circus around it, so, which is also a money-making enterprise for that family. Here's a hypothetical. If she went out in front of her house and did a do doorstop and said, hey everyone, thanks for your interest, I'm home, I just want to have a quiet life now, would that stop the media circus? Won't be doing that because... But how is she allowed to be paid? Isn't it like profiting from crime? Family is, I think, isn't it? Um... Yeah. Let's move on then. OK, we'll stop. <laughs> we'll stop right now. We might talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, though, has had a very interesting time. She's opened up about her affair with Prince Charles. Now, she described the intense media security uh, scrutiny that she went under, hello, uh, as horrid and something that she wouldn't put her worst enemy through. So here we are again looking at media scrutiny, Roscoe. Yeah. Um, now, let's go back to that. Do you think Camilla yes. was treated fairly around the time of this affair? I think she was. And the reason is because you have the prince who is to become the king of the United Kingdom and of Great Britain and of Australia, and therefore the way in which he is conducting his life is quite clearly important into the way in which he will conduct himself in public office. So he is, you know, the person who is ultimately, you know, got to be the face of the public. Mm -hmm. So therefore, his life, sadly... Is in the public interest. Is in the public interest. He's the face to know of the exactly place. And so as a result, whom he is having an affair with at that time, quite clearly. Now that person, as Camilla says, it's a very sad life for her if she has to lock herself away mm -hmm. and can't be seen. Mm. Frankly, that's what comes with the territory. It does, it does. And I'm sure, um, Shelley, she would have she would have had to have, you know, there would have been a lot of vicious, nasty mm -hmm. headlines oh, about yeah. her. Mm -hmm. But it does come with the territory, as Ross says. And there were the tapes uh, too. Uh, what, what's your oh, take? OK, thing. so I have a bit of a controversial take on this. Oh. So I was very anti-Camilla and very pro-Di when it was all happening. But when they actually got married in, what, 2005, it changed for me. I kind of think if someone has an affair and it ends up that the marriage breaks up and then they get married, then it kind of was meant to be. I don't. Oh, you I think, think it was like a legitimate affair? Uh, yeah, I do because I think they both Diana and Charles were so miserable. Mm. Like you couldn't hide how miserable they were. Mm. She was crying in public. Mm. Um, I think that once the affair becomes legitimatized by a marriage, then I think that it changes. The way I look at but it. But I think that's what's happened with the media coverage. Have a look at all of this. Pouring beers in pubs, having a lovely time. Yeah. Yes. I think there's no doubt that that's what's happened over yeah. time. Yeah, people have moved this on. This couple, 
people have moved on and she's grown into people's affections. It's yeah. the moment of time when the affair was happening mm. that the media Absolutely. scrutiny that she's talking about mm. here, and I think that was thoroughly justified at the time. But there is media scrutiny and then there's just nasty, nasty. salacious, yeah. kind of vicious, vicious headlines. Sure. Yeah, all right. Uh, finally, Aussies uh, just wanted to... <laughs> sure, get just get that in there. Right behind us, right? <laughs> <laughs> Aussies are waiting longer than ever to get married, apparently. The average age of grooms in 2017 is 31. Sure. compared to just 23 in 1965. Yep. Now, research has also found more couples are choosing to live together first. Shelley, do you think society values marriage the same way it did 30 years ago? I don't know if it's the same as 30 years ago, but I can say that I love being married and it does feel different to when I was just living How with my has husband. It been? It's only been two years, not even quite. Uh, and I've been married before. So, you know, I've been through the divorce, I've been through being single, I've been married again. And I've got to tell you, I love it, which is why I'm so pro gay marriage because. I do think you feel different and it feels more secure and I like that feeling. I agree with this research that says live with the person beforehand, try before you buy, make sure that, you know, it is something that you want to commit to long term. But I love love. I love marriage. Roscoe, do you reckon this thing does, does society prices. values the marriage? Before going to the finance, Ross. They can't, afford to, they can't <laughs> afford to get married. And let's be honest, the time when people are wealthy, there are two times in your, in your life when you're wealthy. One is when you are a yep. couple yeah. and, and you don't have kids. And the other time is when the kids have all left home and you're actually in your 50s and basically you're both back at work and there's the time. So there's only really two times. Now, the fact is that people are delaying getting married longer, which means they're delaying having a family potentially longer as well. That is, I think, all about the economics. Uh, they're, they're, they're concerned about house prices. They're trying to really, you know, consolidate themselves before they take that next step and then go and move well, on. The research is showing that people are having kids before they get married. Yeah, so but don't, that you, may don't you think as well we're correct. becoming more of a realist about this whole marriage game? Like, before it was like, oh, you, you, the, all you did with life is you get up, you grow up, you get older, you get married. Now yeah. it's like, well, you can actually have more of a life. You can do other things. And, and also, if you're you in a bad marriage, Gen marriage they you can't can make up your mind, can they? That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, Gen a, I'm a Gen X, my friend. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> Go on to Facebook. You made your mind up early. <laughs> <laughs> you were fine. You yeah, were fine. Yeah, right. 33. That's pretty early. Is that early? Not right. This, so. I guess it's right on the money. Yeah. You're an old You timer. are a star. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day. Uh, go on to Facebook and go on to Twitter. Let us know what you think of anything um, you are anyway. Uh, but we appreciate your feedback. And uh, Roscoe and Shelley, good times. So Thanks. 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 Thank you. Just ahead, why one of our favourite and most controversial 90s rock stars has 50 reasons to celebrate.